Hello, welcome to the first abolitionist approach commentary. I'm Gary Francione. I'll tell you up front, there are going to be no bells, whistles, music, or anything like that. This is not going to be entertainment. Uh, the idea is to provoke you, to get you to think about some fundamental issues involved in animal advocacy, and um, to educate you about some, uh, some important issues, at least from my perspective, and to elicit your reactions. Now, today I'm going to talk about a topic that is uh, frequently discussed amongst animal advocates, and that is, should we be promoting vegetarianism as a gateway to veganism? My answer is a resounding no. I think that's a very, very bad idea. Let's think about it for a second. If you're an ovo, lacto, pesco, whatever it is, vegetarian, you are still complicit in the suffering and death of animals. Now, if you regard animals as members of the moral community, if you see them as non-human moral persons, why do you want to be complicit in the infliction of suffering and death on animals? When we are promoting vegetarianism, we are giving people the false impression that there's a factual and a moral distinction between flesh and other animal products. And I suggest to you that both as an empirical matter and as a moral matter, that's false. As an empirical or factual matter, all animal products involve suffering and death. All of them. As a moral matter, you can't make a distinction. If I were to say to you, it's all right to eat meat from large cows, but it's not all right to eat meat from smaller cows. You would say, what's the difference? You're killing and eating the cow. You're inflicting suffering and death on the cow. What difference does the size of the cow make? I suggest to you that the distinction between meat and other animal products is exactly the same. It is exactly the same. To say we shouldn't be eating meat but that there's a distinction between meat and dairy, or meat and eggs, or meat and wool, or meat and silk, or whatever, uh, is simply wrong as a factual matter, and we can't make a moral distinction. You know, I often meet animal advocates, many of whom who don't consume animal products, but wear wool. And they seem very surprised. They say, well, but the sheep aren't killed for the wool. The answer is, of course they are. First of all, sheep shearing is an activity which inflicts an enormous amount of suffering and trauma on the sheep. That's number one. Number two, all of the sheep that are used for wool eventually end up in the slaughterhouse. Number three, you can't distinguish between, if you're wearing a wool garment, you don't know whether that wool was taken from a sheep that wasn't killed on that particular time, was simply tortured when it was, uh, when it was removed and traumatized when it was removed, or whether it was taken from a sheep that was on the way to the slaughterhouse. They don't segregate the wool. But it doesn't really matter because all of the sheep end up in the slaughterhouse. They're all killed. They're all traumatized and shearing. And there are other practices involved in the production of wool, which involve an enormous amount of suffering. For example, flies will often lay eggs around the tail of sheep. They call this a fly strike. To stop fly strikes, sheep farmers engage in a process called mulesing, which basically involves stripping the skin of the sheep around the uh, around the sheep's tail you you strips you, you take strips of skin you remove them you just take this the, the the skin off and it takes weeks for that to scar over it's extremely painful and it's done it's a routine practice which is done uh, in uh, in the wool industry so it doesn't really matter what animal product you're using whether it's meat whether it's dairy, whether it's it's wool, whether it's silk, whether it doesn't leather, it doesn't matter. It involves suffering and death. And when we distinguish between vegetarianism and veganism, and we promote vegetarianism, 
we are giving people the false impression that there is a moral distinction between meat and other animal products and that's simply wrong it's wrong as a factual matter it's wrong as a moral matter and we shouldn't be promoting that notion you know I often say that there's probably more suffering in a glass of milk than there is in a pound of steak by which I mean that if you you know if you think about it their animals used for dairy live longer they are subjected to absolutely horrible treatment they are uh, their, their their babies are taken away from them they are constantly inseminated the milking process is 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 uh, horrible causes mastitis uh, the conditions under which most of these animals are kept even even in supposedly more humane circumstances is absolutely horrible it is torture they are kept alive longer than their meat counterparts and they all end up in the same slaughterhouse anyway so you know if 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 a piece of meat and a glass of milk were put in front of me and I was forced to eat one or the other I I would choose probably the meat over the the milk because I think the milk has as much if not more suffering and death in it than the meat does I wouldn't eat either of them but the idea that well we shouldn't be eating meat but there's somehow a difference between meat and milk is simply fantasy on our parts it's wishful thinking interestingly when people give up meat they often times eat more dairy so they'll increase their intake of cheese or milk or whatever or ice cream and in fact they may end up in the end inflicting more suffering and death. They're being responsible for more suffering and death because they're actually consuming products which probably involve more suffering and death than the meat. So I think it's really important not to give people the false impression that there is a factual or moral distinction between meat and other animal products. There isn't. Now the question comes up, well what do we do with people who, you know, we've ex we've explained things to them and and uh, or or if we if we explain things to them, uh they're not ready to go uh uh vegan right away. So maybe we should promote vegetarianism. No, that's not the answer. If you explain to them why they shouldn't be eating animal products at all and they're not ready to take the step and go vegan, they'll do some they'll 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 do veg some form of vegetarianism. Okay? They'll take some interim step you don't need to be encouraging them to take that interim step or making them think that that interim step is a morally meaningful step let them be aware make it clear that no animal product is is a morally okay product if they can't they don't want to become vegans right away then they'll choose some interim step but you should never give them the false or the misimpression that that interim step is itself morally satisfactory. I think that that's a very, very uh, uh, troubling uh, thing to do. I think it's very, very important to portray veganism as an easy, I mean, it, it's an easy thing to do. I've been a vegan since 1983 or 84, I don't know, a long time ago. And uh, it was a lot more difficult back then it wouldn't have been difficult for me if I was uh, uh, eating the mostly, not completely, but mostly raw diet that I eat now. It would have been easy for me then, but then I ate a lot of processed foods, and there weren't a lot of processed foods around then that were, um, that were uh, vegan. But nevertheless, um, being vegan now is very easy. And if you want to be a healthy vegan, it's extremely easy. All you need are fruits, vegetables, and nuts, basically. And so it's very, very easy to be a vegan. And, and we ought not to be promoting this idea that you know vegan uh, veganism is only for the you know the real Spartans, the hard-hearted, the people who are truly committed. We shouldn't be portraying it as a difficult thing. And even if people want more complex foods or cooked foods or whatever, it's easy to be a vegan. It's just as easy to be a vegan as it is to be a non-vegan. We should never be promoting the idea that veganism is some difficult. Uh, uh, thing to do. It's not. It's not difficult at all. We should be 
portraying it as an easy thing to do. There is nothing more annoying than when these large animal organizations portray veganism as something that can only be achieved by you know, the, the, um, the, the, the superhumans or the people who are really, really committed. Veganism uh, should be portrayed as something that is the only realistic option for anybody who regards non-humans as members of the moral community. If you regard non-human animals as moral persons, then you don't really have a choice. Veganism is the only choice, and it's easy. We should never be portraying it as some sort of difficult or uh, 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 superhuman sort of activity. Now, again, when people say, well, all right, I accept the argument that it's wrong to consume animal products, and, and, and but I, I just don't feel that I can make that. You know, you're saying it's easy, but it's uh, it doesn't strike me as easy, or I'm I'm having some issues with it. I I think I need to do it uh, more gradually. So should I pursue vegetarianism for a while, or should I buy cage-free eggs or free-range eggs or happy meat or whatever? I always advise against that. I say, look, it's easy, but if you can't do it. If you can't do it uh, right away, and I suggest you can, but if you can't, then stay away from vegetarianism, stay away from cage-free eggs, stay away from free-range eggs, stay away from... Go vegan in stages. Don't use vegetarianism and happy meat as interim steps. Simply go vegan in stages. Go vegan for breakfast for a week or two, and see that you are still alive and that you are not blind and that you still have your arms and legs etc and that everything's fine then go vegan for lunch for a couple of weeks then go vegan for dinner and then you're vegan and so it's very you know and and, and obviously st stop purchasing clothing uh wool leather silk etc um but you, 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 you can do it in stages, but they should be vegan stages. I would never promote vegetarianism or happy meat as incremental steps on the way to veganism because I don't think that they're morally valid uh, incremental steps, and I don't think that they work. Now, there are some people who say, well, but, you know, people really can't deal with, with uh, uh, an, an argument for ethical veganism. They'll be overwhelmed by that that we have to uh, give it to them in small small doses or we have to give them the truth in small doses. I think that is such an insulting position to take that it, it's amazing to me that anyone really says that. Um, people are smart enough to understand and I think that uh, the idea that people are too stupid or uh, that they'll be overwhelmed by the truth is really a, a very, very problematic position to take. I think people can understand things. As a matter of fact, I think they can understand for an argument for ethical veganism much more than they can understand an argument for why they should become a vegetarian and still continue to be complicit in inflicting suffering and death on animals. Because if they're if they're all thinking if they're at all thinking about it, they'll come to that conclusion. And I think you confuse them. I think to the extent that you convince somebody that vegetarianism is a morally meaningful position to take, then it's going to be harder for them to move toward veganism. And so you, it, it's actually counterproductive. But I don't agree at all with the position that uh, that w that somehow people will be overwhelmed if we. Uh, discuss ethical veganism with them, and uh, and uh, uh, you know without without vegetarianism as the interim step. I think that that's uh, that, that that position is wrong, and I think that it's insulting to people's intelligence. The final point I want to make is there are some animal advocates who take the position that saying that ethical veganism should be the moral baseline of an animal rights movement is elitist. Now this I find also bewildering. If I were to say to you that the foundation of a women's rights movement ought to be that women have control over their bodies and this means no rape at all. It doesn't matter how humane it is, it doesn't matter whether it's done with an ethic of care, it means no rape whatsoever. 
Would anybody call that elitist? I would hope not. If I were to say that the foundation of a children's rights movement is that children should never be victims of molestation, ever, under any circumstance, doesn't matter how humane it is, they should never be victims of molestation, would anybody call that elitist? Absolutely not. But yet, when it comes to animals, and we say ethical veganism ought to be the moral baseline of the movement, there are animal advocates that say, that's elitist. My response to that is, no, that's speciesist to call it elitist. Because we would never do it in the human context. We shouldn't do it in the non-human context. You know, there is nothing that is more elitist than, in, than exploiting the most vulnerable. There is nothing more elitist than saying that it's okay to have that dish of ice cream if you really want it. It's okay to have that cheese pizza if you really want it. Or you like fish, so yeah, it's okay you know, to allow yourself the, quote, luxury, end quote, as I've read in the work of uh, my colleague Peter Singer, that we can afford the luxury of consuming animal products. I disagree with that completely just as I would disagree with the idea that we can allow ourselves the luxury of the occasional indulgence in rape or the luxury of the occasional indulgence in child molestation. If we are not speciesists, then we should be in favor of the abolition of all animal exploitation. We should be consistent. Being consistent is not being elitist. Being inconsistent and continuing to support the exploitation of the most vulnerable among us, that's elitist. Thank you very much for listening to this, the first abolitionist approach commentary. Please visit our website, www.abolitionistapproach.com. Thank you very much. Bye.